In this video we'll take a look at this Sagis chronograph. I reviewed another Sagis chrono not so long ago and I've got to say that it had a very decent build quality and a very good overall value proposition. Is this the case with this watch? Well, in this video we'll try to find out. Hello and welcome back! Sagis reached out to me not so long ago and offered to pick a watch review from their AliExpress shop. Without hesitation I went for this colorful, even somewhat funky chronograph watch. I will be honest, I was impressed by the visual design, looks like a real petrol head watch. Little did I know, however, after a few clicks on the interweb it transpired that Sagis borrowed a few cues, should I say, from a Breitling Top Time Duos Collaboration Limited Edition Chronograph. I must point out, however, that even though it is not immediately obvious, there are some conceptual differences between Breitling and this Sagis watch. I will get to those details and those differences in a moment, but for now I'll just say that, in my opinion, those differences do not make this Sagis any less interesting. Probably to the contrary. Dare I say, these differences even give this watch some sense of individuality. And of course, there will be a link in the description to Sagis AliExpress store and to this watch listing. Yes, Sagis priced this fully mechanical chronograph at 197 US dollars. An absolute steal, in my opinion, for what we get here and compared to other mechanical chronographs on AliExpress, which are based on the similar movements. And of course, as usual, by using the scouts and coupons during various sales on AliExpress, which do occur nearly every few weeks, we can get a further $10 or even higher discount. Right, packaging. Well, Sagas ships this watch in this minimalistic but robust box, which looks premium enough if you plan this watch as a present. I think Seagull, which usually prices their watches considerably higher, use the same type of packaging. In the box we get the usual, a user manual and a warranty card. Sagas also included another strap, a metal mesh type, which does change the look of this watch quite dramatically. Personally, I think there are better strap options for this dial colorway, however, you might like it and I think it is good to have that extra option. And also, being a 20mm strap, I can of course use it on other watches in my collection. And by the way, both straps come with a quick release, so we can easily switch them around without needing any tools. Dimensions. We have a classic 40mm diameter with 20mm lux proportions here, which I think suits this watch very well. The height of the watch as I measured it is 13.5mm, out of which about 1mm is taken by this lovely gently curved Don't Sapphire crystal. Lock tip to lock tip is just over 15.5mm, however, if we exclude the protruding parts of the locks and measure just the real distance between the spring bars, we get 47mm, making this watch suitable to a high variety of wrist sizes from 6 inches and up. And on the supplied leather strap, this watch weighs 71 grams. Nice and light. The supplied leather strap will cover up to 8.25 inch wrist or 21 cm wrist in circumference. And of course, with 20 mm lugs, we can always easily swap it for a longer strap if needed. Dial. Dial is definitely one of the highlights of this watch. We have a contrast combination of black tachymeter track and sub dials on the champagne background. All the markings on the dial are clear and crisp and well executed. Okay, one thing that was designed by Sagis here was the writing, and I must say that they did a pretty good job. I like the font and minimalistic branding under the 12 o'clock marker and right to the point wording at the bottom of the dial as well. I think it fits very well with the overall aesthetics of the dial. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the execution is very good, especially considering the price point of this watch. The hour markers are applied and filled with loom. We have a combination of yellow and orange hands here. By the way, an interesting detail. Looks like the yellow hands are related to the normal running time, that is, the hour minute and the running seconds on the left subdial, showing us the current time. And the orange hands relate to the chronograph, the lightning strike shaped second hand and a 30 minute chronograph accumulated at 3 o'clock subdial. I find this color separation between chronograph and normal time hands quite useful and it makes the functionality and operation of this watch very clear. 
the minute and the hour hands are filled with loom and provide a sufficient level of visibility in the dark. Unfortunately, this is not the case with the loom on our indices, which is somewhat weaker. A possibly one of the compromises the Sagas had to make to keep the price of this watch in the $190 range. Crystal. We have a nice, ever so slightly curved double dome sapphire crystal here, framed by a mirror polished smooth bezel. Unlike the subtle distortion at the sharp viewing angles, it gives this watch kind of warm, vintagey feel. Sagis makes no mention of any anti-reflective coating here, however, after using this watch for a few weeks, it didn't present any issues with legibility. Case. Moving on to the case, we have a full stainless steel construction here with good quality mirror polish all around, including the fixed bezel. The transition between the fixed bezel and the crystal is smooth and almost flush. The quality of the finish is pretty good, especially given the price point of this watch. We have a signed crown with a laser each star and two chronograph pushes in the shape of engine pistons, I guess continuing the motor racing theme of this sporty chronograph. The transitions between the facets are also well finished and there are no sharp corners to speak of. We then get to the back of the case, where we greeted with a lovely exhibition case back, with a view of a decorated ST1901 chronograph movement. More about it in a moment. Sagas declared 50 meters of water resistance on this chronograph, so it should be sufficient to wash your hands and maybe get onto occasional rain. However, with a non screw down crown and non screw down pushes, I would recommend to keep this watch away from the water exposure. If there is a mechanical chronograph under $300, it will most likely feature this movement or one of its variants. This does not make it less interesting, though. This famous Seagull ST1901 movement first featured in Chinese Air Force military chronograph known as Seagull 1963, and this movement has its roots in the Swiss column wheel chronograph caliber Venus 175. And as I mentioned in my other reviews, this movement shares the same operating principle, column wheel, with another legendary chronograph movement, Limania, which was used by Amiga in their famous Moonwatch. Taking a closer look at the movement, we can see that the finishing is pretty good. The mirror polish surfaces do play in the light quite nicely. We even get some additional decorations like Geneva stripes, blue screws, although those I think are actually painted, and so-called swan neck regulator on the balance wheel, which usually allows for more accurate adjustment. I like that Sagas went with the exhibition case back here, allowing us to enjoy a nice view of the intricate inner works of this mechanical caliber. One thing to remember though about this movement, it is a mechanical movement which does need a periodic wind. And as far as I know, the wind mechanism still does not have a clutch, and therefore we need to be careful not to over tight the spring. That is to stop winding the crown once you feel a fairly strong resistance. Bracelet. As I already mentioned, both supply straps come with a quick release option and in general are of a good quality. And this watch is really good if you want to experiment with different styles and strap colors. Because the dial has black, yellow and reddish accents, this watch works well with black and various shades of brown leather straps. And by going from crocodile pattern leather to a sporty smooth perforated or bund leather straps, we can really dress this watch up or down as we wish. Sagas also offers a so-called version 2 of this watch with only difference as far as I can see a really nice sporty leather strap. This would be my choice, to be quite honest, and Sagis also sells that strap on its own, so I will leave a link in the description of this video if you want to get it. Ok, the good, the bad. Well, I made this watch my daily for about 3 weeks, and I end up leaving it on this bunt leather strap. I like the cool and casual aesthetics of this look. And, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are a couple of points that make this watch different from the Breitling that it takes so much inspiration from. And the first thing is the manual wind movement, unlike the Breitling watch, which has an automatic one. I like the process of winding this watch up, a bit of a close and personal few seconds of daily quality time I get to spend with this good-looking timepiece. And the second key difference to the Breitling is the exhibition case back. 
looks great in my opinion and makes this watch look considerably more expensive than it actually is. And as for any negatives, well, I really struggled to find anything to complain about. The watch looks great and proved to be quite accurate in the daily use. Possibly a stronger loom would be beneficial, however, given the price point and the fact that this is not a diver, this would not be a deal breaker for me. Other than that, a great mechanical chrono for under 200 bucks, an easy choice if this is the type of watch you're after. What are your thoughts? Well, do let us know in the comments. And if you find this review helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and of course subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching, take care and I will see you in the next one.